Welcome back for episode 10 of Following Freak Show, a show dedicated to discussing last night's episode of American Horror Story Freak Show. I'm your moderator, Perry Nemiroff, and here are our panelists. Hi, I'm Alexa Sarala. Hi, I'm Meg Patterson. Hi, I'm Sasha Capelli. All right, so episode 10, Orphans, focuses almost entirely on Pepper. We finally get to see how she became Elsa's first monster and then why she ends up in American Horror Story Asylum. But then, meanwhile, Maggie is kind of taking a cue from Jimmy and drowning her sorrows in alcohol while he rots away in jail for a crime he didn't commit. So let's just start there and get Maggie out of the way. Sasha, how do you feel about what she went through this episode? Well, I... I... I kind of have been struggling with Maggie and her kind of I'm a, a moral character and I'm also a liar character with her fortune telling abilities. Uh, and we kind of got a backstory on a lot of the characters this this episode, but especially uh, Maggie and her criminal partner, which like I feel like he's so mean and he's so evil that the backstory wasn't enough. It was like she was like a an orphan kind of like scratchy Oliver Twist kind of paper boy girl and she's going to get arrested and he helps her not get arrested and that's it. <laughs> like there's no like yeah. there's no It's very uh, anticlimactic. Like I almost wish he was just her dad and that was the obligation. It, it, right. it didn't not, explain the hold that he has over her. At nothing. All. There was nothing. I mean, I I'd, I'd rather her go to jail than than be a part of like all this freak show massacre stuff. That, that could have been doing. a nice parallel too if she was in jail in like the flashback and he got her out of jail yeah. and like she's trying to do that for Jimmy. That would have been like a nice little connection. Yeah, right? it would have been great, but she I I don't understand where her morale comes from and I don't understand where her evil side comes from either so yeah. when she starts to kind of like realize that all, everything is everything they're doing is wrong and uh, people dying is is wrong she uh, I, I guess alcohol is the elixir that just kind of like changes everything for, for the circus <laughs> and she goes on to tell uh, to kind of just tattle on her partner again for no reason. <laughs> like, I'm kind of uh, like, I mean, I was kind of just brushing it off as like a drunk thing, but it seems like a pretty extreme drunk thing to do to basically say, like, yeah. I mean, she flat out just admitted everything out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then the show her, too. They ended up all the way yeah. up there. Yeah. I know. They took a train to Philadelphia to that museum. I was like, was that necessary? How the hell did they get no. there? <laughs> I, I wonder how, like, everyone's getting around, period, because, I mean, there's a lot of traveling to Massachusetts, and there's so many yeah. locations. I mean... I know, I know. There's a lot of places for them to go, and they just all of a sudden have the ability to do so. And right. I don't... I just don't understand what's, like, in Maggie's heart. I don't get it. Like, she has a crush... She has something for Jimmy. She has a crush for him. So she turns into a spiral when she doesn't receive any sort of love back. But I just I just don't know what her character is really serving for That's us. That's the biggest problem with that flashback is that that would have been the perfect opportunity to give her a little motivation mm -hmm. and a little reason for all the decisions that she's making because she is making some pretty big decisions at this yeah. point. Yeah. But, you know, we haven't really gotten that. So there's really no layers to that character whatsoever except for whatever she's doing in right. that specific episode, which right, right. there hasn't been much of a through line for her at all. No, right. no. And she's not propelling the story for me at all. And she's not even an enjoyable character. Like, and if she had some freak of availability, that'd be great. But she has nothing. And when you go visit Jimmy in jail, I mean, at least if, at some point. I don't know. Well, the Jimmy with jail in jail thing kind of fell totally flat when the, the preview <laughs> spoiled that it's not his hands. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, I, I don't know. That really just confused me. It's like, don't do that if that was, like, one of your big cliffhangers in this episode. Right. It kind of just took away all the meaning for that one yep. scene. Yeah, yeah, unless absolutely. in the preview it was a flashback. Like, you know, they do do flashbacks, so... That's, That's what I was That's thinking. Or unless somewhat... Maybe there's, like, another freak collector out there. Actually, yeah. now that I say that out loud, that, that'd be a cool idea. And, like, Stanley had some competition. Maybe. <laughs> I just completely made that up, though. <laughs> well, that would be more interesting if Stanley had... Something else, because I—I mean, even Stanley, like he's like kind of like the evil moral character. But I'm like, why? Why do you? What's your vendetta against freaks? Like, <laughs> why are you killing so many freaks? So I don't know. I just don't. It just doesn't hit me hard, it, and I find it unnecessary because all these freaks are are going away. So I don't know. Maggie's 
Maggie's on her way to the Elsa on my nerves area <laughs> of, of American Horror Story. All right, let's move on to the meat of the episode now, which is pretty much Pepper. Meg, do you want to talk a little bit about what she went through? Yeah, I first of all, I had no idea that she was married to Salty. I thought they were brother and sister. Cause yeah, I, I did too. I thought it was brother and sister at some points, but regardless, we find out she's married to Salty. Salty dies potentially in his sleep and peacefully and everything. She can't handle it, so then... Elsa decides to take her back to her shitty alcoholic sister, which I hated that storyline. Like, uh, what, what makes you think you can trust this woman? And she's like, oh, yeah, she's falling all over the place. Let's just leave a, a like slightly handicapped person with her who can do more than she can. And then the whole baby thing, and they tied that in really well, too. We watched the first episode of Asylum last night after the actual episode, and they say, oh, don't talk to her when she's like, play with me to Lana. She says, oh, yeah, she cut her sister's baby's ears off and drowned him in a tub. They had oh. that even though it was kind okay. of a stupid connection. But, uh, yeah, so she eventually gets committed to the asylum when Glenn Gulia and his shitty alcoholic wife decide to take her away to the asylum. <laughs> that was so sad. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was such a bummer. Like, because I, I liked Pepper, or I, I liked the asylum character because it was just kind of in the background but a little freaky looking, and, mm -hmm. and you always kind of wanted to know a little bit of the backstory. But the backstory is, like, nothing freaky, nothing... Like, it's just a sad backstory. Like, Elsa disposes of her just like she did yeah. in the beginning. It's sad, but I thought it was really effective, especially for Elsa. Like, it was finally nice to... You know, she's been saying, my monster's this, yeah. my monster's that all season. And, like, this is the first time we actually see her, like, mm -hmm. care for someone. That's and that true. this person really, like, and it, like, hits her, like, down to the core. And I, I appreciated that part. And I also think that most of the flashback stuff worked really well just because of... Naomi Grossman and Jessica mm -hmm. Lange. I think it was some of the best acting of the season. Oh, yeah. but, I mean, like, I hear you. The second they got to that sister's house and she's, like, slurring her words, and mm -hmm. you know, I think a couple of times she reversed the first letters on a couple words. Yeah, I she did. Yeah. <laughs> like, weird. I play that game all the time with my family, so I, like, I had fun with that idea, I guess. But, like, <laughs> why, why would you ever think that's okay? It's like, I totally bought when she was leaving and she was crying, but mm -hmm. for, first of all, why would you leave her with a drug? And second of all, why was that the best thing for Pepper to begin with? That's not exactly. her family anymore. No. Right. Her family, and I kind right. of, I get the whole idea that she needed a change so that she didn't kind of like wallow away and you know be, just be upset about salty and ruin her life forever. But she fixed that problem before. Right. She got my petite right. for her, then she got salty for her. Why can't she do it again? Right. Yeah. But well, then I, I, think, I guess the Hollywood thing is the answer. Right. I mean, I guess it, it points to Elsa's inane selfishness. Like even yeah. though we we see her loving her and being sad, it's still that she wants to get out of the freak show herself, and she has to take care of her freak somehow, I guess, before she leaves her Hollywood, which yeah. then, at the end, we saw her on the cover of Life magazine, it was mm -hmm. like 1957. So I, I don't know about that. I think I was happier about it just because Pepper was so happy about it, but no. like, Elsa it also does not Pepper that. imagining it. Maybe Pepper, like, it had heard enough that she thinks that Elsa is now you know, got her wish or whatever. You she never know. Us. Yeah, maybe. I almost hope that the reveal for that, it's because, like, there's no way they would just throw that cover in there and then yeah. at the end be like, oh, Elsa lives happily ever after. Like, yeah. maybe she makes a show with the freaks. I don't maybe. know. I mean, I'm I hoping she so. takes them with her. I do, too, because it's like, I do like to see when Elsa does care for her freaks because I love the whole mother and freak family mentality, but... It, again, like I don't know. I guess, I guess, and I have. I'm not resolved. I love to see when Jessica Lange really puts her back into it and cries and and feels for her freaks. But at this point, I don't. I I was. I couldn't even get my heart into it when she started to reminisce about Pepper and Ma Petite because I was like, she's just gonna fuck this up anyway, and she did. Like by by leaving her with with the crappy drunk family. So I couldn't even start to feel that Elsa had a heart because I knew she was gonna screw it up anyway <laughs> with her family. So. That's actually a really good transition. Alexis, do you want to talk about kind of like where this episode came in this season and how it affects what we've seen before and what's coming after? Yeah, well, it was interesting in that um, we finally we heard the backstory of how Elsa founded the Freak Show, um, which, interestingly enough, always from the beginning was so that she could be a star and mm -hmm. the Freaks would draw in the crowd. Um, but also, it did show that she did really love the some of these. I mean, it seemed like she did. Um, the way that she, like, adopted Pepper and then fell in love with Ma Petite and, and sort of took her from the, the pet situation she was living with the Maharaja <laughs> there. Um, 
And then I, so I think maybe they were trying to soften Elsa's character a bit, but then as we just discussed, I mean, it was almost like they wanted to for, they also wanted to force the connection to season two to the asylum. And I know fans have been excited about that. We have been excited about that. And I love seeing Lily Rabe's character again. But I think that it made it, it just took it to a more like a sad story instead of a horror story. Yeah. The connection I mean, felt so forced. Yeah. I mean, yeah Lily exactly. Rabe's character didn't do anything. It'd be one thing if she did something mm -hmm, to like right. make Pepper stay, or I don't know. But like she was really only reacting to what the sister told yeah. her. And like yeah. she'd already been established as kind of like a shitty nasty person who's drunk and lies and oh, right. I don't know, like I wasn't moved by her, I needed to be moved by the this character that they brought right. back from season two right. but I mean the person that really held all of that together was Naomi Grossman just because yeah. all that really mattered this episode is how everything that was happening affected her not right. necessarily about what was happening itself. That's true, that's true I just, I mean, the see the Asylum episode, the Asylum season was a, a pretty decent season, so I was kind of hoping we'd get to walk through again, like we'd get to walk through, maybe they couldn't get to the set or something, but I'd love to just walk through that creepy set that, that they had. <laughs> I said, even when um, Sister Mary Eunice showed up, I was like, wouldn't it be great if Jessica Lange just showed, <laughs> just, like, showed up? <laughs> well, it's, hard, so, it's hard not to think about that, yeah. when she's like on the magazine cover, and she's supposed to be working in that building, I mean, yeah. it's kind of only natural to think about that. Yeah, and that would have that would have put it over the top, like, then, then I would have been like, oh, cool, like a lot, a lot of cool stuff. But I wish this episode had come earlier in the season. Yeah, because yeah, I think yeah. that would have been a get big game changer. Like, let's say, let's say, let's push Twisty to later in the season mm -hmm. and have the beginning of the season focus on you know backstories and right. building characters and like why this group of people is so special mm -hmm. and why they all need each other and okay. then have everything go to hell and then everything going crazy right. would matter a little more. Right, right. Mm -hmm. This for right. our for our uh, winter cliffhanger. Yeah, even the last, like, no. ending with Jimmy no. getting arrested, and that giant, you know, all those women being killed, that that's a bigger cliffhanger in my mind right. to end on. Yeah, this really did feel like a bit of a weird pause in the season. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. right, it felt misplaced. It felt like it was a misplaced episode. Like, if I, if I, if this, if they made it a little more Halloween-y or something, and they put it, like, in Halloween or something, I would have even, like, been happier with that, but there were no stakes. Like, there was no, I had no investment in, I mean, I liked Pepper as a character, and I like, and I like to see Elsa have feelings, but I just didn't, I, I only felt sadness for Pepper, which yeah. was good. I was moved a little bit, but I just, I I had no I was like 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 you said like there was no horror in going back to the asylum it was only sad and it's not American bummer story <laughs> <laughs> we're not watching a lifetime movie no. <laughs> it actually does make me appreciate asylum more and that was my least favorite season because it was just so all over the place but I really do miss it going big and crazy and yeah. uh, me too I don't I don't like about... being sad. Yeah, me neither. And like I like again, like I'm I'm I had a lot of hopes for this season, so maybe that's why I'm being so bitter bones about it, but I'm I'm bummed. I'm bummed I wasn't like more like interested in in how in, in the freaks and and even their backstories. I, I love backstory stuff. I've been waiting for backstory stuff, but this just made me so sad. Mm -hmm. One question I wondered, I thought it was a little bit odd that Pepper didn't get to tell her own backstory. Mm -hmm. Um and I know there was that moment in Asylum when the aliens like Turned her into a talking. Like she was able yeah. to talk. Oh, that's right. And I, I forgot I about like, that. <laughs> I could have done a similar thing that maybe in her mind she can talk normal. You know, like I thought yeah. it would give her a little more agency at least to have to tell her story instead of have uh, Jessica tell the whole thing. That would have made yeah. the uh, asylum stuff more interesting too. Mm -hmm. Like if there was something in her that wanted to tell the truth and she yeah. just couldn't communicate it. Yeah, well, that would be like cool. she, she did try to say to Lily Rave, like... We should just rewrite the rest of the season. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And all the ideas we have, like when we do this, I'm always like, they need to put us in that room. <laughs> we need to figure this out for them. All right, let's talk a little bit about what, what they wrote and what we're looking forward and what's to come in the next few episodes. Last <laughs> Uh, three episodes, actually. So I'm really sad to say this, but I think I kind of want to rewatch American Horror Story Asylum more than I'm looking forward to in what's to come when the show comes back in January, which is like super sad. And like just the whole idea of American Horror Story freak show not going big enough and not being colorful enough is really bothering me. So I don't, I don't really know what I'm looking forward to except like I mean the obvious one, Neil Patrick Harris, because it really looks like he's finally going to be the person to, like, mm -hmm. get a little crazy and 
Like, just ha- have that craziness that Asylum had, because mm-hmm. I- I'm longing for it at this point, and I didn't like it when it was happening, but now I'm so desperate for it, because I don't like feeling, like, bored and-, and sad. I mean, it's, like, my petite, Ethel, now Pepper, like, yeah. all right, let's 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 get crazy, let's have a little fun with this idea, because mm-hmm. there's so much potential. I mean, that's why we're coming up with all these great ideas. <laughs> all right, Sasha, what do you got this week? Uh, well, I'm actually looking forward to, and the last time I said it, we really got it. Uh, we'll get some dandy stuff. Let's 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 just do it again. Like, cause uh, like uh, when I was saying I wanted it to go balls to the wall and just have every, the townspeople and the freaks battle, we're obviously not getting that. So let's see, like let's see dandy partner up with me and Patrick Harris, and or maybe dandy finds Neil Patrick Harris to be too crazy. Whatever it is, I want to see dan- I, I, more dandy. He's the most interesting climactic character in the entire. Thing and again, Jessica Lang's legs. Have they been? Have we talked? Have does anybody been revealed with her legs that she's Ethel. Ethel? Just Ethel. Yeah. So yeah. no. Yeah. So so yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe Dandy will rip Jessica Lang's legs off and show her for who <laughs> she is. I'm hoping that Dandy will kind of be a catalyst to make everybody more interesting and scary. Because again, yeah, I am. I'm tired of being sad and, and, and bored. Right. <laughs> I don't want to see something crazy and scary. But I would still like to point out that when she was sleeping with uh, Paul, he must have noticed her fake <laughs> Yeah, you have to think so. <laughs> I would love if Paul was the one to just come right out and say that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Meg, what about you? Um, I'm kind of with Sasha. I mean, they hinted at a return of Twisty, and I don't know in, if it would be like in a flashback capacity where they kind of mm. brought back Petit to show the backstory or like something, but they got to bring back some like just gross, messed up shit. And then in the preview, I don't know if you guys saw, but Jamie Brewer, the actress that yes. played Diane in the last season, she's yeah. coming back, so and excited. I adore her. So she'll be back for that. And then I know Neil Patrick Harris's husband in real life is going to be somewhere in there. And I'm kind of curious if they're going to connect him in the ventriloquist sense or if he's going to be like a completely different bad guy. So now I'm just excited for all the different guest stars that they're going to bring yeah. in and make it exciting again, hopefully. <laughs> all right, Alexis, you're up. Um, I'm excited. Well, I was actually glad we got more of Desiree this episode. Oh, true. Um, and I'm now excited because she is going to want revenge. And I think perhaps uh, Stanley's. Thing, as we said last week, is going to end up in one of those jars. That would be the ultimate mm-hmm. uh, revenge on that character. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that. Um, also, that I cool. just have to say quickly, that would be I, don't, I can't believe Jimmy thinks he might have done it. I mean, does he not remember that Dandy is out there and that Dandy is I mean, a lo- serial killer? A lot happened then, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you're right. A lot happened after that whole massacre, right? Yeah. I find it hard to believe that he would have blacked out through that entire thing. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah, what, like, what are they drinking? Oh, so he doesn't remember the moment with the twins, then? Apparently not. Oh, one of the most, like, important scenes of that episode, so he's got no no memory of that. That's yeah, terrible. I found that to be, like, a throwaway, where he's like, I can't recall. I'm like, what, the, what did you drink? Like, what <laughs> in these alcohol that you people are just drinking and just going willy-nilly all over? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so that is a wrap on Following Freak Show, episode 10. Don't forget to keep an eye out for new installments the day after every episode of American Horror Story airs on Collider, but also keep in mind that it's the holiday break, so episode 11 doesn't air until January 7th, Aww. but the good thing about that is it gives you more than enough time to share your thoughts <laughs> in the comment section below so then maybe we can discuss your ideas when we return in the new year. So thank you so much for following Freak Show with us. Have a happy holiday. Enjoy the new year. All that good stuff and we will see you when we return. Bye! Bye.